a woven pattern like this is a really good addition to your Illustrator pattern collection. So we're going to create one. We're going to start with new file. This pattern is going to be customizable, so you will be able to get more than one pattern out of this sort of approach. I'm going to start with the rectangle tool, click in the document and type 300 for the width and 100 for the height and click OK. For this we need a stroke which is a multiple of 2. So you want to be able to make your stroke a number that if you divide by 2 there's nothing left over. I'm setting mine to 6. And from the stroke panel here you want to set it so that the align stroke to center option is selected. That means that the stroke is centered over the edge of the shape. I have the transform panel visible here. You can get to it by choosing window and then transform. What we're going to do is we're going to use it to overcome a problem that Illustrator has in that it wants to be a bit weird in terms of lining things up. So what I'm going to do is line up this midpoint on this side of this shape so that we can line up the next shape to it. So I'm going in here to the transform panel. I'm going to click this option, the middle of these nine boxes on the right hand side. So that's targeting this point here. And it's X and Y values are right off the planet here. So I'm just going to make them something that is even. So I'm just using 500. Well, let's use 500 and 500 because that's a nice smart sort of thing to do. And the width and height should be 300 and 100 because that's the size we made the shape. So let's just click away. I want to make a duplicate of this shape, which I can do by holding down the Alt or Option key and dragging a duplicate away. I'm going to rotate it, holding the Shift key so it's rotated to a perfect 90 degrees. Let's have a look at this shape. We want this point here to be lined up exactly to the middle of this shape. Well, we're going to select this reference point this time, the one in the middle on the left hand side. And remember we made this one 500 and 500, well we're just going to make this one 500 and 500. And when we do, everything's lined up perfectly. Now we can check everything's working by selecting over both shapes and the width should be 400 and the height should be 300. If you're out, you'll need to double check your reference points and the position of them. Now there's another way that you can use to make sure that these are lined up perfectly and that is to select over both of them and choose view and then outline. In outline view you shouldn't see anything thick here. So let me just go and show you what you shouldn't see. You can see that there's a thickness here. So that's telling me I've got two lines side by side not on top of each other. So let me just grab this and put it back where it came from and you can see it's perfectly lined up. To get out of this, you choose View and then GPU Preview. Now we're going to actually fill these shapes up because it's going to be a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm just going to fill them with a pink color. That color is going to be in the final pattern. So if you want a different color, choose a different color at this stage. Also, if you want different colored lines, then choose those too. Now the next step is really important. We're going to group this with Object and then Group. The reason for this is that the next tool we're going to use will treat these objects as two separate objects if they're not grouped. We want them to be treated as a single object, so grouping them is the smart option. We also want to make a copy in exactly the same position, so I suggest you use Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place because that creates a duplicate exactly on top of the original, so we know where it is. Now we're going to choose Object, Transform and Transform Each. We're going to flip this 180 degrees and this is the point that you determine whether or not you have things grouped. Because if you flip them 180 degrees and they're not in a group, the result is not going to look like this. Now in terms of horizontal, we're going to push it 100 pixels horizontally and we're going to push it 200 pixels vertically. What we're looking for is this area in here to be square because this is our pattern. I'll click OK. Again, you can check everything's lined up perfectly a couple of ways. Select over everything. The width and height should be 500. You can also go to View Outline and again, you shouldn't see any double lines or any lines that are separated from each other. Everything here is just perfect. So I'm going to select over my shapes. I'm going to choose Object and then Pattern, Make. 
Now in the pattern options dialog, I want to be using grid as my pattern and I want to lock this option so it looks like this. And I'm going to set the width and the height of my tile to 400 and 400. Now, not only are these values that we've been using so far really easy to write down, remember, and to line everything up to, but also we're creating a pattern tile that is a nice even value. And this gives us a better chance of not having fracture lines, those white lines through our pattern later on. So it's just a smart thing to do. The pattern's looking perfect. I'm going to click Done. Now before we go and check the pattern, let's make a second one. I'm going to all of these objects, I'm going to choose Object Ungroup because I want to be able to isolate this one and this one here. So the vertical ones I want to isolate. I'm going to change their fill color. So I'm going to choose a sort of turquoise fill color. I'm just aiming for something a bit lighter than that though. So let's reselect this and go to Object Pattern Make. Same thing, grid style pattern, same thing, lock it up here and use 400 and 400 for the width and height. And so now we have a pattern of alternating stripes. So I'm going to click Done. Let's go back to this and what I'm going to do is set this to pink. I'm also going to set this one to pink. So I'm going to select it, click on the eyedropper tool and target this. So the two are the exact same color just saves me from having to work out what color they were. I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to target the eyedropper tool again. There it is. And I'm going to click on this. So now I've got two colors, but in a different arrangement. Again, object, pattern, make. Click OK. Exactly the same settings again. So here we have a different arrangement of colors. Here we've got pink stripes going down and across and blue stripes going down and across. It's a different pattern. I'll click Done. So now let's see how everything looks. I'm going to move everything to one side. I'm going to click and create a shape which is 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels because that's the size of my document. Let's just square everything up. I'm going to remove the stroke. I'm going to target the fill. And let's go and get the first of our woven patterns. That's the pink one. Then we have our multicolored one with the vertical weave in one color and the horizontal in another. And then we have our two color weave where we've got pink running in each direction and blue running in each direction. So our patterns are perfect. One of the benefits of creating these multicolored versions is even if you don't like the colors you've used, if you create a multicolor version, then you can edit it. So with this pattern filled object selected, I'm going to the recolor artwork tool. I'm going to click on advanced options here and I'm going to click on edit because this is my blue and this is my pink. So I can drag these around. I'm just going to unlock them. So I can drag this blue around to get a different blue color and I can drag the pink, what was the pink, around to get a different color. So we can finesse this pattern really easily by just creating it in two colors, which gives us the ability to recolor each of those two colors. If it was all one color, if it was all just a pink weave, it would be impossible for us at this stage to separate those colors as easily as we are doing here. When I click OK, you'll notice that we actually have an extra pattern in our pattern swatches. So we've got the original one, two, three patterns, and then we've got this recolored version. Now, once you've created your first woven pattern, it's possible to adjust this. So let's see how we would create something that's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to take these shapes and I'm going to increase them. So I'm going to use the transform tool for this. For every one of these shapes, instead of it being 100 pixels high, I'm going to make it 200. In this case, it's its width. And then we're going to place them relative to each other in the same position. So I'm going to select over both of these shapes and make sure that they're nicely centered. Select over both these shapes and make sure that they are centered. I'm going to make sure that they're aligned and these two are definitely not aligned. 
if I hold the shift key, they're going to be moved in a perfectly vertical direction because they were aligned nicely in terms of being centered, just not to each other's edges. When I check in the transform panel, they're 300 by 500 in terms of the height of this entire shape. So that's a good height. I'm going to group those so they don't move. Let's go and check these two. Again, they're 300, 500. They're perfectly sized. So I'm going to choose object and group. Now I just need to place them so that they're in the correct position. Let's just check over this. I've aligned them using the guides and it's perfect. 550, 550. So you want them to form a square and you want it to be a nice even number. And of course we can go to the view outline and just check that we don't have any double lines. We don't, so everything's perfect. This is a pattern. We'll select over it, choose object, pattern, make. Now we'll use the same grid option as we did before, but this time we don't need to do so much movement. I'm going to start moving it manually and just see where it lines up. And we're looking for a nice even value here. I just hit 500 and 500 when the pattern looked good. So that's telling me the pattern is perfect. So I'll click done. Now we're here, we could go and ungroup all of these objects with object ungroup, and then we could just change the colors if we wanted to. So I'm going to select this blue color for this one. Let me come down and select this one and select the pink color for this. This is also a pattern, select over everything, object, pattern, make. We've learned that for this design, 500 and 500 is the ideal movement. This is a pattern, click done. Let's go back to our shape here, select it, and let's try these new patterns. These are much thicker patterns. It's a slightly different design, but all very doable once you understand that you only need four rectangles for this. You want the stroke to be centered over the edge of the shape. You want it to be a number that's divisible by two. But from there, pretty much you can eyeball a lot of this and create these really wonderful designs very quickly and very easily. One quick tip before we finish is that if you want to fill in these spaces here, you could add a filled rectangle behind the rectangle with the pattern and fill it with black. This is what you're going to see. So this pattern, the transparency has been caught by a black filled rectangle immediately underneath the pattern filled rectangle. So this is what it looks like in the layers palette. This is our pattern and it's obviously transparent. And this is the black filled rectangle immediately underneath it. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.